Welcome to the Palo Alto International Film Festival. When Devyani asked me to talk about uh, the future of mobile and uh, movies, I immediately found an underlying common theme. Uh, I didn't know much about either of them. Um, but uh, I asked for a change in the title from state of the mobile and movies to future of the mobile and movies because the word future gave me the license to say anything I wanted without too many people challenging me. Um, my name is Nikhil Zakadar. I'm the CEO of Uclip, and like I've said, uh, we are the world's largest independent mobile video service. Uh, and uh, CEO of a mobile video company is another way of saying I can watch movies any time of the day or night, and I can call it work. So when the kids come and shout and say, keep it down, dad's working. Right? It, it's, it's an amazing a privilege. Um, on a slightly more serious note, uh, being with the mobile video company for the last four years, I've had a chance to see how the mobile industry and the movie industry have evolved, and um, it continues to evolve, and I thought I'd share some of my observations and, um, with, with you guys and you know, see what you have to say about it. You can't see half of it, but uh, it says movies equal to entertainment and mobile equal to personal. Uh, I went for my first movie in uh, 1978. My parents took me to, this, uh, to, to my first movie, and I was excited about watching my first movie because my friends around me at school spoke about this amazing movie called Superman. Superman 1 was just released then, and uh, I was fascinated by the concept of a grown man wearing his underwear over his pants and flying all over the world, um, I said, I have to see this movie. Uh, so my parents agreed, and um, they said, we'll, we'll, let's do it. So 8 o'clock in the morning, I put on my shoes. I, was, I sat in front of the TV as if it was a big event. And uh, they said, no, son, the movie is not going to play at home. You have to go to a theater. And I said, OK, let's go. No, it only plays at 5 o'clock in the evening and 8 o'clock in the evening. I said, that's fine. I waited until then. When I went there, that theater was playing the 36th chamber of Shaolin. Um, so I watched that movie. Uh, I loved it, but in retrospect, I couldn't watch the movie I wanted. I couldn't watch it when I wanted it, and I couldn't watch it where I wanted it. I had to go to a specific place at a specific time, and I didn't have the choice. Um, to about a little less than 20 years back, when I first came to the US, I was fascinated by the concept of uh, the multiplexes. Now there were 10 movies playing at the same time. I had more choice. But I still had to go to the theater, and I still had to uh, wait for the times that the movie played at. Uh, in the early 2000s, with the advent of cable and uh, streaming video on the internet, I could now watch more movies when I wanted them, and uh, I didn't have to leave my home. I could watch it at home. So things got easier and easier. And then came the mobile. And you know, mobile overcame all the barriers that I ran into the first time I tried to watch movies. I could watch almost any movie I wanted. I could watch it wherever I wanted it. And considering the amount of time a lot of us spend at airports, on airplanes, in buses, in long lines, I had the ability to watch that movie wherever I was. I didn't have to wait to go home. So that uh, ability to time shift, to space shift, and to get complete freedom is what uh, the mobile platform um, has given us. And uh, I think um, you know, the industry, the movie industry, the mobile operators, the device makers all saw this coming. And uh, uh, they started going down this path about five years back. So when I talk about the past, when it comes to mobile and movies, the past is only about seven years old. Uh, seven, eight years back, people started coming out with the first mobile, video capable mobile devices. And uh, you could watch short clips. But the initial start was pretty rocky for a number of reasons. One of the reasons was the mobile networks were not, were not very good. I mean, in the mid-90s, you had uh, these 56K modems at home. I'm sure all of you remember that sound. Um, that's what the mobile network was until a few years back. And so movies would const or even short clips would constantly buffer. You couldn't watch more than uh, 30 seconds or a minute before 
it started buffering, which was not a very good user experience. Um, the other issue was until a few years back, most of the, the phone screen sizes were pretty small. Uh, they were what we call today feature phones. And um, you could really, you had to really strain your eye and it gave you a headache to watch even a short clip. So again, uh, not a great user experience. And the third reason why it didn't take off in the last few years was because people were paying for data on an as-you-go basis, as-you-use basis. And video is pretty heavy. It consumes a lot of data. And so people uh, ran up huge bills. Uh, you know, unlimited data plans and other types of data plans came in more recently. So it was a pretty expensive uh, proposition which also gave people an, a headache. So all in all, the initial start was rocky and it caused a lot of people to question whether you know, mobile and movies and mobile and video was actually going to take off. Uh, but, you know, it actually uh, did. Uh, and it, and uh, today, people have been listening to the feedback and people have been uh, making changes. And so a number of things that have changed. Number one, the mobile networks have definitely gotten better. Um, you know, there was a, there's a whole concept of edge networks. Then we moved to uh, 3G and Wi-Fi. Everybody has Wi-Fi at home and at Starbucks and all that. And now there's 4G, LTE, and that's it. Uh, that's the only time I'll throw out buzzwords like that, but, um, you know, the, the networks have gotten way, way better. You can now watch pretty lengthy movies without them buffering. It's a much better user experience. Um, so that's helped a lot. Uh, the second thing that's helped a lot is the mobile devices themselves. One of our neighbors here from Palo Alto, a gentleman by the name of Steve Jobs, created uh, the iPhone, and that changed the industry significantly. Now you had bigger screens, better video capabilities, and then came the iPad, and, and a lot of people have begun to uh, follow that lead, and now smartphones and tablets uh, exist all over the place. In fact, now you can actually watch a movie and be able to tell the difference between uh, Superman and Batman. You know, earlier the screens were really tiny, you couldn't make out the difference, now you can. So that's a big step forward. Um, and you know, the opportunity is big enough that the third piece of the puzzle, which is the movie makers, uh, the movie studios, for a long time they were hesitant about moving to the mobile as a medium, but uh, the opportunity is getting big enough that uh, I'm hopeful that that's going to keep getting better and more and more movies are going to be made available on the uh, mobile screen. So things have definitely uh, gotten better, and uh, you know what I want to share with you are some of the things that exist in terms of products uh, when it comes to mobile and movies today. Uh, an example is a video ringtone. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with audio ringtones. Your uh, people around you, their phones go off with uh, fun songs and annoying songs, hello moto, uh, and stuff like that. And so you take it to the next step with the advent of smartphones. When somebody calls you, you can actually associate a movie clip or a home video you've taken on your phone, and you get that to play when a person calls you. So as an example, uh, my uh, tyrannical Uncle Bob, whenever he calls, I have a, a clip set for him. Oh no, it's Uncle Bob. So this is actually, this is around, it's sort of beginning to take off and, uh, you know, for movie uh, studios, it's an interesting uh, opportunity to start monetizing their clips. Um, so, you know, I expect in uh, the next 12 months, a lot of you will have video ringtones on your phones. Um, another interesting uh, opportunity is the movie clip portal. So uh, this is in the Indian market and it's in some of the emerging markets. The Indian market, uh, for example, is nothing like the US market. Uh, the op operator networks are still not all that great. Uh, they are like the past in the US. The devices are not all that great. Uh, they are more feature phones. Yet, uh, the one interesting thing about the Indian market, which is very different from the US market, is there are 600 million monthly active mobile subscribers. Uh, there are only 12 million monthly broadband users. So for the mass market, they're not going to get their 
fill of uh, content from the desktop is going to come from their mobile devices. And this is not true just for India, it's true for the emerging markets in general. Uh, so there's a big opportunity there. And when it comes to content, uh, you know, in India they call it the ABCD of content. Astrology, Bollywood, cricket, and devotional. And if you have these four, you've got uh, the mind share of the user. Within that, Bollywood is king and cricket is a close second. So, um, uh, you know, this is where they uh, worship the Bollywood stars and cricketers and having been one of them, I understand that sentiment. So, people need their fix of daily Bollywood clips and cricket clips and so on. So, uh, in India, uh, an example of a product is uh, where uh, we worked with all the movie studios and created two-minute clips, the magic moments of the movie. So you had the songs and the action sequences and the uh, romantic uh, scenes and so on. And uh, you could actually go uh, search for clips by genre, by language, by uh, stars and so on. And here's an example of, a, of an actual product. So that was a small screen and that's a very typical screen size, you know, uh, iPhones are not big in India. It's still the small feature phones uh, that are big and, um, and this works great. This is actually a product that's live and people consuming, consume it uh, in plenty. Uh, again, for the movie studios, a new revenue opportunity to take not full length films but clips to play on the mobile device. So that brings us to what you can't see but the future. Neither can I see the future, but um, so uh, you know when it comes to the future, there are um, you know everybody's uh, has a, has a guess, and uh, you know we've taken a shot at I've taken a shot at what I think is uh, coming down the pipe when it comes to the intersection of movies and mobile, and uh, I'd like to share some of my uh, findings or observations or guesses. So I think some of this was spoken about at the earlier panel, but uh, the concept of watching a movie or being recommended a movie based on your mood. So today, you do a lot of stuff on your mobile device. You send emails, you send SMSs, text messages, um, you set your calendar. And so you can imagine the concept of your uh, mobile device being able to s sense your mood. You know, I just uh, got upset at some uh, meeting and, you know, I'm not very happy. Uh, as an example, Google does this today with uh, Gmail. You send out emails, there are appropriately recommended ads that are shown based on the content of your email. Well, take it to the next level and see whether you can get the mood, uh, your mood out of all your interactions, and then, appro and then recommend a movie. I'm, I have a party set up uh, with my friends at a local winery at 5 p.m. on uh, Saturday. You know, it's, it, my mobile device knows that I'm free 8 o'clock onwards that day. I just had a party at a winery. Maybe I should go see Sideways or I should see Sideways on my mobile device. So, you know, examples like that. Uh, I can say what I want is the future. Nobody can argue. Uh, the other one is my ending. Uh, you know, a lot of movies actually come out with alternative endings, which most people don't see, but if you get, got the DVD, uh, in the extra section, there is always a section about alternative endings. Many of the movies that uh, we watch actually have alternative endings. And you could imagine that you know, on your mobile device, you, it's personalized to you, so you could say, I'm in the mood for a happy ending, so you know, show me an appropriate video, uh, appropriate movie with appropriate ending. So interesting uh, personalization-based uh, examples like that. The other one is gamification. You know, mobile gaming is big. Everybody loves to play games on their mobile devices. Uh, and so what if you married mobile uh, movies with mobile gaming? You're watching a movie and uh, you get to answer questions if you want. You can turn it off if it gets too annoying. But there are enough people who think that it's, it's a good game. You win points. And uh, you know, if, if I'm a movie studio, I'd want all the points uh, that 
happen across my movies to uh, come together, which gives me a pull from the consumer for movies that are coming out from my studio. Uh, you know, airlines do that, right? Today you choose the airline often based on where your frequent flyer miles. Similarly, you could do this based on you know, watch movies where you already have a, with a studio that you already have a collection with. Obviously, the movie has to be good, but uh, there are going to be more gaming mechanics that are going to uh, come into movie watching moving forward. A third one, shop while you watch. You know, product placement has been around for quite some time. Uh, Mission Impossible 3 had more products than anybody can count. Uh, and, and quite a few movies do have product placement. But, you know, watching it in a movie theater, I watch it and often I forget about it. But imagine uh, I'm on my mobile phone, I'm watching a movie and there is an, uh, there's a nice uh, suit somebody is wearing in the movie and right at the bottom it says, you know, buy this suit from armani.com uh, or other such interesting product placement ideas. If it gets annoying, turn it off, but the ability to, you know, to uh, get some commerce going uh, for people interested is another idea that uh, we see coming down the line. There are three other ideas. I'm going to just sh mention them here, but I'm going to actually show you some uh, videos that we have for these. One is a holographic screen. Um, the other is social viewing. And the third one is 15-minute movies. Uh, Alf uh, referred to it, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Holographic screen, again, one of the uh, hits about a mobile device is that the screen size is still small. Even for the iPhone, it's still smaller than your TV screen. Um, what if you could actually uh, get the mobile device to project the video onto something bigger, whether it's onto a wall or just a holographic screen? Uh, there were a couple of guys, I believe, from San Francisco who put together a pretty nice video, which uh, I have borrowed just a certain segment of it, uh, because I think it tells the story really well. I think that's pretty powerful. It's not, it's not there yet, but and if you could do that, you would not be as concerned about watching the video on a smaller screen. Okay. The other one is a social movie experience. So, especially Bollywood movies, um, when we when I watch them, I watch them with a big group of friends because there's always some comments that we can pass on the movie. Uh, that's probably true for many other movies as well. Today. Um, I'm, I'm often traveling and so are a lot of people. They're on the road. Imagine watching a movie in 20 different places with, uh, or with your friends, family at the same time. And if you could watch it together where you're all watching the same movie in different places, you get to comment on it, you get to pass your snide remarks, uh, that would be pretty cool. And I think that's something that's coming down the path as well. Change my mind. You get the idea. So there are people all over the place commenting on it, and, and it, it makes it for a much more uh, social interaction instead of just sitting on your own and watching it. And the last thing is the 15-minute mo mobile movies. This is something that I think is could be pretty big. Um, I view this as a as a new. Um, mode of entertainment. You have the one and a half hour movies to three hour movies depending on the movie industry and uh, you have the two minute trailers. But uh, on the mobile device, while there are people who can watch a full length movie, there are a lot of people whose attention span is going to be about 15 minutes. And so what if I could take a one and a half hour movie or a three hour movie and condense it down to 15 minutes? Now, all movies don't lend themselves to this, but there are quite a few movies that do. Um, without putting, you know, without taking any names, there are enough Bollywood movies that I could write a script and give you a 15-minute version of that. And uh, in fact, let me take a shot at that. Uh, you know, you can't see it here, but if I were to create a 15-minute Bollywood movie, uh, the first minute would be dedicated to brothers getting separated at birth. Okay, they get separated by a bad guy, and there's one minute dedicated to that. Um, the next one minute, uh, I'd show one of the brothers growing up to be a likable uh, local thug. 
and uh, you know there'll be a interesting sequence for a, about a minute on that. Uh, third one is the other brother grows up to be a cop, and a one minute of him beating up some guys to show uh, that he's a cop. Uh, then uh, the, I'd have two songs, one song for each of the brothers. Uh, one brother meets his girlfriend, the other brother meets his girlfriend. Two minute songs for each, that's for about four minutes. We've hit the halfway point, the intermission. Uh, then uh, the brothers unknowingly run into each other, uh, that's two minutes. It's an emotional sequence and uh, they find out that they're brothers, long lost brothers. Uh, then uh, they reconcile after finding matching tattoos on their left arms, uh, that's about a minute. Uh, two minutes for one song with all, both the brothers together and their girlfriends, now they're really bonding. Uh, now they find the bad guy and they beat him up, that's about two minutes, uh, that's an action sequence. And then a last one minute on they live happily ever after and one final song to just you know, put it all together. So, you know, there are a lot of good Bollywood movies, but there are quite a few that I could uh, formal, you know, get this formulaic version going. Uh, but, you know, there is a market for a 15 minute movie, one, because of attention span, but secondly, because, you know, to go watch a movie today with your whole family is not an uh, inexpensive affair. It's, it gets expensive, and so, you know, you can go watch one movie. For the, for the layman, watching one movie with their entire family is expensive enough. Um, so what happens uh, is you have a few blockbuster hits, but more than 90% of the movies lose money. What if you could create an additional uh, way of getting the movie being shown? It's a 15 minute movie, it costs a fifth of the, whole, of the full movie, and you can watch it on your mobile device. You know, to me, this is an incremental revenue stream. It's not cannibalizing the full movie, right? There are other examples where I remember there was a very uh, a big budget movie in India called Kites. Um, it was a ton of money was spent on it, but uh, before it even hit the, uh, the theaters, there was a big backlash against it on Facebook. Some, you know, the, the sentiment that was spread was it's a pretty bad movie. So a lot of people didn't even go and watch it. But, you know, if there was a 15 minute version that cost me a fifth and I didn't have to leave my house, I'd probably go see that. And so that to me is an incremental revenue stream. Uh, so there are a number of different interesting reasons why a 15 minute movie uh, would make sense. And in fact, uh, the movie studios are beginning to think about this. It's not happened as yet. There are some very early signs of this happening. And there was this blockbuster movie called uh, Dabang in India which uh, we had a 15 minute version created of it. Obviously we don't have 15 minutes to show the movie here, but I took a snippet of the 15 minute and you know, you get to see it. Alvin meets the ch and the chipmunks meets the bung. We have the fast forwarding. I enjoy that movie. <laughs> so, you know, all in all, I, I think that uh, there's a lot more one can talk about, but um, I have 20 minutes, and so I think I'll stop here. The future of mobile and movies both is very, very um, bright, and um, I'm sure there are a lot of other very smart people who are going to come and give it more thought and come up with interesting, innovative new ideas. Thank can you. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Oh, God, clap, clap. <laughs> Is, it, is anyone doing subliminal self-help 15-minute videos? <laughs> I'm sure that's going to come out soon. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. I want the lose weight one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a product we call video alerts. And uh, you can choose the topic you want, health, uh, fitness, uh, the latest Bollywood clip, and every day at 9 o'clock in the morning, you're sent a two-minute clip uh, on things like self-help. Not exactly self-help, but things like that. The subliminal ones move really fast. You don't even really see the images. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I want to say I found the hologram projection idea really interesting because back in 1895, when the Lumiere brothers created projected cinema, their father told them, get the image out of the box, because the Edison kinetoscope was just you know, viewable right. that way. Right. So it seems like the parallel opportunity that you're pointing your finger at there, and we all know how successful that was first time around. I work with 15 to 18 year olds teaching them film, and they like to go to YouTube and other places like that and watch their favorite bits of the film or mashups of their favorite bits of the film. Right. And I also work with uh, a lot of filmmakers and people in the studios, and they're very resistant to that, both for artistic and business reasons. But I keep telling them, guys, you've got to get used to it. Uh, to me, it's like when, when I was in high school, singles made you buy the album. I'm curious if you have any thoughts, impressions on the US or the markets in India and other places, how much resistance there remains to going to that way of um, sharing movies and, and, and when it might change right. the tipping point. Now, I think that's an excellent question. And we have seen a very similar resistance. Uh, directors don't want their movies to be edited by others into a 15-minute version. Uh, but the thing that's helped uh, overcome a lot of that resistance is piracy and uh, YouTube. Um, and so people have realized that you know, that's what consumers want. So just find a different way of making money. You still have to make money, obviously. but. And so for the first time, some of, not all, but quite a few of the uh, movie studios, at least in India, have opened up to the idea of uh, letting the directors themselves create a 15-minute version so they get to keep their creative uh, and their uh, licenses. Um, but the ability to create different types of uh, mashups uh, is becoming more important. There is still a lot of resistance, more so in Hollywood than Bollywood. Here we have not had as much success, but uh, I think one of the reasons is because the 15-minute version lends itself more to mobile devices, and uh, in India, mobile is the only way to reach the masses. Today here in the US, you can still reach a significant audience through a desktop, but the, the more the youth come into the main, fra you know, in the main picture and uh, in the mainstream and they start consuming only through the mobile, I believe that even here it will start changing. Thank <laughs> you.